from unexpected wax. Okay, sorry. Um. To pants splitting farts. There were lots of hilarious saw moments behind the scenes of Harry Potter. Let's compare the bleepers versus actual scenes from the movies. Even though Harry had just discovered the existence of a whole new magical world in the Philosopher's Stone, the boy who lived was still surprised to see goblins running the show at Gringotts. Seriously, just look at his expression here. And does Mr. Harry Potter have his key? Well, this was a scene that actually took multiple takes because Daniel Radcliffe couldn't quite feign his shock in the way that the director Chris Columbus wanted. So the director asked Warwick Davis in full scary goblin attire to scream at Harry to see if that would get a reaction out of the actor. Look me in the eye when I'm talking to you! Does Mr. Harry Potter have his key? Turns out that Dan truly wasn't phased by anything at all, including goblins, because he couldn't hold it in as soon as the director yelled, cut! <laughs> hey, when you have a fit of giggles, it's really hard to get rid of it, right? Well, this wasn't a problem that was just unique to Dan, either, since his co-star Rupert Grint was notorious for cracking up mid-scene. <laughs> The Order of the Phoenix featured a moment where Harry's classmates started to doubt him, even hinting that he was a liar about he who shall not be named coming back. While Seamus confronted him about it and what he'd heard through his mother, Ron stepped in to defend his friend. Has anyone else got a problem with Harry? It's a powerful sequence that truly demonstrated how important Ron was to the story and how he'd always have Harry's back no matter who stood against them. While trying to film it, though, well, let's just see that Rupert found the funny side of it over and over again. You just shut your mouth. I do. <laughs> you just shut your mouth. <laughs> but why did he find this so hilarious to record? No one really knows. In fact, Matthew Lewis said it was a common occurrence on set, and if you asked Rupert what he was laughing about, he couldn't even tell you. <laughs> oh, <so> <laughs> Don't listen to this. <laughs> well, laughter is the best medicine, and it sounds like he wanted it on a drip, plugged into him all the time. Even in arguably his biggest scene in the franchise, Rupert's propensity for the giggles kicked in and nearly derailed everything. Though he wasn't alone in sharing the blame here, as his co-conspirator was Emma Watson. <laughs> It was supposed to be the kiss heard around the world. The moment where Harry Potter fans cheered and punched the air as Ron and Hermione finally let their passionate feelings for each other take over. Then, this happened. <laughs> <laughs> the problem was Rupert and Emma had been such good friends for so many years and this whole thing felt awkward to them. It was kind of like kissing your sibling and that seems to only be acceptable on Game of Thrones because yuck. The director encouraged them to look past seeing each other as friends and actors, but to channel their emotions as Ron and Hermione. Eventually, the two of them got it together and delivered this iconic kiss, and it was simply fireworks. In terms of packing a punch, Emma certainly knew how to land them. Talk about making Mike Tyson blush. Though sometimes she was a little rough on her co-stars, never quite knowing her own strength and when to hold back. When Hermione and Harry discussed the issue of the Chosen One in this scene, this is how she dealt with the turn that their conversation took. Okay, sorry. Um... Now, you might think it's just a floppy newspaper and that the filmmakers would add an extra wallop to the sound effects, you know, to really make it sound harder than it was. But Emma actually ended up whacking Dan that hard. And her reaction is simply priceless in this behind-the-scenes clip. You're laughing because you hit me so hard, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of sweet how she instantly hugs him and tries to apologize for being overzealous here, even if he probably had a concussion from the blow. However, this was something of a trend with her on set, especially with poor Dan who always seemed to be on the receiving end of Emma's aggressive style of acting. Remember that scene where Hermione yanks out a strand of Harry's hair? All right, Granger, I was disgust. Blimey, Hermione. Straight in here, if you please. Well, Dan got a little more than he bargained for as Emma woke up and chose violence that morning and decided method acting was the only way to go here because she actually pulled out a strand of his hair on the day and it hurt. Ow! Blimey, Hermione. And, uh, she got one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. 
No wonder actors insist on wearing wigs during productions, probably to avoid getting their hair pulled out by the likes of Emma. Naturally, she felt terrible about it and gave him a hug to apologize, but at this point, Dan must have wondered if Hermione wasn't secretly the Voldemort of his own life. Seriously, she inflicted more pain on him than the snaky villain by the end of the series. And speaking of enemies, Dan met his greatest nemesis on set, a bra. In the Deadly Hallows, specifically the Polyjuice Potion scene, the young actor needed to take off a bra in one go. Bill, look away. I'm hideous. I knew she was lying about that tattoo. Anyone who's never worn one might think it's the easiest thing in the world, but oh no, it's an art of both precision and timing. There's no cutting corners here because removing a bra in one swift movement takes a lot of practice, and Dan was shown to be a true amateur in one embarrassing and hilarious behind the scenes gaffe. Bill, look away. I'm idiots. Bra's not coming off. They do not again, ladies and gents. Shame. He looked so defeated by his failings here. Well, there was no getting around it, and he couldn't call a stunt double to do it, so he had to do it over and over again until he got it right. Judging by the final cut, though, he finally got it and pulled it off in expert fashion. Makes you wonder if someone might have given him some tips here. Hmm. No matter how much practice he put in, though, Ron's backfiring slug spell just looked so disgusting. <laughs> Honestly, you felt your stomach turn as you saw that thing come out of his mouth. Even looking at it now makes us extremely queasy. Fortunately for Rupert, no one actually made him put a real slug in his mouth. Why are you so surprised? These directors weren't monsters. Instead, the actor was given a fake slug made out of tasty slime flavors such as chocolate, peppermint, orange, and lemon. And it tasted quite nice, actually. As incredible as that sounds, it still looks pretty gross, and even the cast members couldn't help but laugh along with him when he brought it all up. It just goes to show that the presentation of food is as important as its flavor. And thankfully, Rupert wasn't trying to be a method actor here because, uh, yeah. No one wants to see another human being spitting out a slug. There are times, though, when actors intentionally troll each other during shoots. Because why wouldn't you? After all, it's the same as any other work environment, right? But what you wouldn't expect is for Alan Rickman and Michael Gambon to be the ultimate pranksters on set. During a scene where Dumbledore and Snape walk past the children as they sleep, it seems completely unassuming and just an opportunity for the filmmakers to drop a little exposition in the story. And I'm more than willing to send the students back to their houses. What about Potter? Should he be warned? Nothing wrong here, right? Well, one of the earlier takes was a super prank that caught absolutely everyone off guard. Just take a look for yourself. We enter completely our own world. You know, it's completely our own world. And we like to... Despite how it looks, it actually wasn't Dan breaking wind here, but a carefully thought-out prank organized beforehand. With the help of the crew, Dan's sleeping bag had been secretly fitted with a device, a fart machine. Then Michael had another device he'd push to make the flatulent noise. Needless to say, he found it absolutely hilarious, and so did everyone else on set as they broke out into wild fits of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part for Dan? He actually fancied the girl whose sleeping bag was near his and had asked to intentionally be put near her for the scene. Moral of the story, don't tell anyone when you like someone else, Dan, because they will definitely embarrass you on purpose then. The laughs don't need to stop here, though, as we have another side-splitting video featuring Harry Potter's outrageous bleepers and hilarious moments waiting just for you. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and stay awesome!